Welcome back, Shalligators. I know, I feel like, I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in a while. I, it's because I haven't. And I know I haven't been doing as many YouTube videos. It's because the business octopus, those tentacles need a lot of love and attention. And I've been working on some other things. You know, I've been doing the Alpha Academy stuff and the Chalentourage, our daily tech service. And there's a bunch of bonus videos on there. I'm working on finalizing the new clothing line, the new jewelry line, a whole downloadable course that you guys are gonna be able to have access to super soon. So listen, just because I'm not posting on YouTube doesn't mean I'm sitting around doing nothing. I am actually more stressed and burnt out than ever. We're gonna, we can talk about it in a second. Um, but look, today we're gonna talk about the show on Netflix called Indian Matchmaking. They really, I wanna meet the creative team that came up with that wildly unique name. Like, what about, what about if we call it, hold on, Jeff, like, I'm gonna let you finish, so hold on. What about if we called it like, I don't know, this is just like a on the spot Trevor idea. This is just like Trevor being Trevor right now. Indian matchmaking. Oh, bro, uh, 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 Trevor does it again, Trev. I mean, it's about Indian matchmaking. And I've been watching it a little bit. My mom told me to watch it because she's like, it's so interesting for a whole bunch of reasons. We'll, we'll get into it. But it got me thinking about the concept of matchmaking and arranged, not even arranged marriages because that's pretty extreme for all of us, but setups and matchmaking and matchmaking services, do they work? Like what did studies tell us about people who set up other people? Well, I've had some experience with actually the Millionaire Matchmakers Club, like the actual one, not the TV show. Like Patty Stanger had like a real club and I was part of it and I went out on several millionaire dates. I'll tell you about that. And I'm also gonna tell you about my friend's experience with the matchmaking service Talkify. Is it a scam? You know I ain't trying to get sued or nothing, but I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, but before we get into it, like I said, there's so much stuff going on here. So we've got the Alpha Academy hookup tutorials. Now we've gone through kissing, handjobs, blowjobs, sex, and now it's time for the bonus episode on how to be sexy. Because all the technical knowledge in the world doesn't, you know, it's not worth a hill of beans. If you feel awkward and out of your element and unsure of just how to be sexy, how to move in that kind of way. I've been that girl. I totally get it. I will tell you how to overcome it. And then next Wednesday, we have our final bonus episode on kinks. All things kinky. We're going to do a live stream and then a Q&A after party. And just in case you didn't get to see some of these or you wish you had them to watch, they are all rolling out as we speak on the Chalantrage, which is our daily text community. So you get a text, a lot of texts <laughs> from me actually. You get access to our six different Telegram mini chat groups. And plus the best part is a whole bunch of bonus story times, bonus podcast, extra videos. I do, I think like four extra videos a week and they're super raw and real and I've cried in half of them. But we talk about things that are sometimes a little too spicy for YouTube. Like recently we talked about if Army Hammer if everyone needs to get off his fucking back about his weird fetishes, and I will do a YouTube video on this once his documentary comes out, but we've already talked about it on there. And if you join, you have access to all the stuff I have posted in the past. So you're gonna get Alpha Academy, the hookup tutorials, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay. Also, hold on. Before we get into Indian matchmaking, I, I, I wanted to kind of do this for a little while, is talk a little bit about not politics, but sort of world events. I'm trying to be a bit more well-informed about things that are going on in the world and talk about them here because look, so many of us are moderates. You know, we're centrists. We're not ultra left, we're not ultra right. And it seems like now in society, people on just the extreme ends are the ones getting attention. And there's so many of us in the middle who are so capable of having a thoughtful, nuanced, like back and forth, like point counterpoint debate on things. And I'm like, okay, let's, we can do that here. So. I've been trying to read about some things and I'm also trying to share some like good news of what's going on in the world because I've been like honestly super fucking clinically depressed lately. But I talked about that in the Chalantras. I just put out a video. <sighs> but so I'm going to be sharing some some things that I'm learning and I want you to talk about it in the comments so we can talk about things together. And some some of it's going to be a little more controversial. Some of it's going to be maybe a little spicier. That's okay. And but some of it we're going to start easy. So today 
<laughs> there's this might sound boring to you but I'm telling you that this is a really good thing because sometimes like boring things we overlook but we're like oh fuck this is like actually a huge deal okay so there's something called the chips bill that just passed here in America it's bipartisan which means it's not democrat it's not republican it's just like it's just a bill you know it's kind of something everyone can agree on so a huge issue that's been going on lately in the world has to do with microchips like Microchips are in cell phones, they're in cars, they're in military weapons, they're in like all sorts of things, like medical equipment. And we have had like severe supply chain issues because 75% of microchips are made in Asia. And so we haven't been able to get them. And so if you guys have tried to like buy a car or trade in your car, you've noticed that there's like the, the used car market is huge because you can't really get new cars because there's no microchips to go in them. And like, this is obviously bad if we can't put microchips on our military weapons because our military is kind of screwed then, right? So this bill passed and it's actually reinvesting. Basically it's incentivizing American companies to make microchips and giving like a, what is it? Like a 25% tax credit for companies that are developing these things. So that to me was a piece of good news. It's like boring. But it's actually good news. I'm like, hey, we're reinvesting in our country. We're going to get like the spigot turned back on for these things so we can, the price of phones are going to come down. The price of a lot of stuff is going to come down. So I think I just thought that was like a little bit of good news to share. <laughs> like, And yeah, it's like semiconductors. So listen, I will, I will try to make these things as sexy as I can going forward. But if there's other stuff you want to talk about, you know, I know the big things dominating are like gun violence, Roe versus Wade, but there's so many other things. And honestly, elections are coming and we really need to be, we need to be well informed, you know, because we're queens and queens know everything's going on in their empire. Okay, let's talk about Indian matchmaking. I, I liked the show. It was a little, I liked it for like two episodes, three episodes. And I'm like, eh, I really don't care. I won't even try to remember the names of the people. I'm so sorry. I really like the chicken guy who lives in the country. He's a fox, foxy. And uh, Viral, oh, Viral, I love her. She reminds me of me. She's like the really high powered one. She's like, my life is great. It's just this like one part that's missing. Like you want a free hotel room and a first class plane ticket? Date me. I was like, I see you on this. I see you and I feel you. I feel bad that her name is essentially viral because you know it isn't. I mean, obviously in India and like Indian culture, it's like a totally normal, cool, beautiful name. <laughs> like in America on paper, it's viral. It's like if you're, <laughs> you're like, my name is Pacifier. They're like, Pacifier? Because it's written as Pacifier. No, Pacifier. It seems like Pacifier. Like you just be fucked. My exchange student when I was in high school, because I studied abroad every year and every summer in um, France, in the south of France, and my exchange student, she was a piece of work. Her name was Aurelie, A-U-R-L-I-E. Americans pronounce it orally. And my guy friends fucking lost it. They're like, her name is orally? I'm like, no, it's Aurelie. They're like, yeah, orally. <laughs> you just... You always feel for people who have like a name that makes total sense in their culture and they're dropped into another one. And it's like, your name's anal? Like, what? Hemorrhoids? Not that Viral's name is like that. It's totally cute. And I like her. I like her a lot. I, I hope she finds love. I'm too lazy to finish watching the show. But look, I, <laughs> I wanted to talk about matchmaking because... It's one of those things that on at first glance, you're like, ugh, pfft. like it's so old fashioned, but you know, everything old is new again, coastal grandma. So we're kind of like experiencing a bit of a renaissance on old shit and being like, you know what? I don't want a smartphone or a smart toilet. I want a dumb toilet and a dumb phone that just lets me live my life. And sometimes the old ways are the best. Like you, on that show, I really liked that they were showing like older, um, Indian couples who had had arranged marriages and they, they just look so cute, like giggling and looking at each other and like so cute. Now I do wonder, I do wonder if matchmaking works better in cultures or communities or whatever little subgroups where sex isn't really a big deal. Surprise, surprise. I'm a very sexual person. Like sex to me is huge. Sexual attraction is huge. And like, that's not something you can manufacture. You can't predict it. I mean, look at the people you've hooked up with and just been like, oh, I love him. Oh, 
Blech. Right? It makes your skin crawl on paper. If someone showed you a picture of that dude, you'd be like, I'm so good. No, thank you. There's no accounting for chemistry, right? It's like animal magnetism. So I wonder if in these cultures, and look, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking out of turn. So tell me, um, my Indian chickadees, is sex like not really something you're taught to prioritize in a relationship? Are you encouraged to explore your own sexuality and to be a hoe and have that hoe phase? I mean, are you supposed to be a virgin when you get married? I don't, you know, I have no idea. I don't know. Same with like Asian cultures where like matchmaking is very traditional and not weird at all. Same in Jewish cultures. Oh, the Jewish girls I know. Damn, they got down. They stole all my men. They stole all my men. Anyway, I think that there's something to be said for the wisdom of the crowd, right? Like when we, we can be like, ugh, matchmaking as if, and yet when we think about our best friends and who we'd wanna set them up with, like what their ideal man would be, it's like, oh, Abby needs a guy, he's like divorced, a little older, maybe like not works in construction, but owns a construction company. You know, like we have such a great composite sketch of what we think our friends should have that when you look at it through that lens, it's like, why would it be weird that we would use a matchmaker Especially when it's like, clearly, I don't know if I know what I'm doing, you know? I'm letting my pelvis lead the way. How is, where is it leading me? To the plan B aisle of CVS Pharmacy. Got it. I mean, if we keep doing what we're doing, we're going to keep getting what we're getting. So I definitely see the appeal of a matchmaker, especially if you're matchmaking within your own culture. Because like, this isn't like a screed on like, you should only date your own kind. No, but there's just a lot that's easier. You know, even I like, listen, it's not cool to be from California when you live in Montana. Like I literally don't tell anyone unless I meet other Californians. I'm like, oh, say nothing. I find that I do get along with them better. We just have the same sensibility. We can reference the same things. Our jokes kind of make sense. Like we have the same like musical histories, like a bunch of little things. And those little things really can add up to create quite a solid foundation of bonding and similarity. Whereas someone from Montana, like I think it's really cool. The guys grew up like milking cows and hunting elk, but like do opposites attract? We have done videos on this. There were many studies on this. No, they don't. The peer excuse me, the pillars of compatibility overwhelmingly are all about sameness, same goals, same religion, same way of communicating, same way of parenting, same, 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 same way you recreate. You know, a guy who grew up in the country in Montana or like in a mountain shack doesn't probably recreate the way like a city girl does. I don't even need to say probably. I have learned empirically they, that they do not. They like to, they like to wear those shoes with the Velcro. Right there. Uh, whatever activity follows the Velcro shoes, miss me with that. I'm not, I'm good. I'm good. No, thank you. I will be at the Four Seasons. I think it's high tea. I'll have a cucumber sandwich in my hand. Thank you. We can meet after you take a shower. So I get, there's a huge argument to be made for like within your own culture and so many of those similarities and God knows the parents. <laughs> Such a huge pull on this. There was an episode of the Golden Girls where Sophia had to see a doctor and this guy, the doctor came over and um, she found out he was Jewish and she's like, how come so many doctors are Jewish? And he's like, because their mothers are <laughs> It's like your mothers told you to be a doctor. Like, yo, we can all act as independent as we want. At the end of the day, our moms have a whole lot of sway. And if it's kind of been indoctrinated in you to like marry within your own culture, religion, country, whatever language, even that's, that's huge. I mean, if I took home a guy who was from Italy, even though my family is Italian, but he spoke Italian and like English was his second language, that would be, I would never say frowned upon by my family, but it would be a longer integration period for sure. You get it. The, you know what? We're animals and we're tribal animals. We're pack animals. So this whole concept that like everybody's got to mingle every culture all the time, like that's not really always in our nature. I mean, we're not animal animals we can override our inherent nature i mean it's in my nature to pee wherever i want i don't usually but biology has some pull there but does match making work does it work one thing that stood out to me on indian matchmakers and by i 
when I say me, I mean my mother and she pointed it out. She's like, it was, it was interesting to see like the matchmaker, the chick would ask these single people, like, what are your list of qualifications? You know, and it's funny, they like ding them all like on this little graphic. And my mom was like, all of the things they asked for were very reasonable, like self-made, tall. And by the way, tall was 5'8 or above. Not tall. Not, that's not tall to me. Tall women want tall men. Short women want tall men. Short men can have each other. So the things that they were listing were like extremely reasonable, you know, like educated, speaks the same language I speak. But it, once it got past like three or four like bullet points qualifications, the lady's like, that's too many. Like you're going to get 70% of that. You're not going to get 100% of that. And that felt, that was like very jarring for these people to hear and they got really defensive. It's like, well, I'm bringing all this stuff to the table. And it's like, no, you're not. You're not bringing a hundred. You will not bring a hundred percent to the table to your partner, from your partner's point of view. Like you are bringing a ton to the table, but it is actually, your partner has his own specific list. You know, like men out there, and I, the chick didn't say this, this is Shallon's advice, matchmaker Shallon. Like your partner has his own list and you are probably only gonna hit 70 or 80% of that. Not that you're not gonna bring anything else, but they just, the things you bring might not be stuff that they value in the same way. Like I don't care if I date someone athletic, but I feel like a guy would be like, oh, I'm so athletic. And I'm like, cool. Like, I want you to have a good body, but I don't need you like bobbing and weaving around a trail run on a fucking mountain. I don't care. I just want you to look good naked and be able to have a lot of sex. You know? Great. Self-made. I really don't care if you're self-made. If you took over your family's business, but you're crushing it and you're passionate about it, that's fine. Cool. Okay. So based on this study, I was looking on uh, this study from... Chapdelaine, Kenny, and LaFontana in 1994, they concluded that people use their own impressions to infer whether or not someone else will like a person. Okay, so this means if you like someone, you assume everyone is going to like them and vice versa. If you don't like someone, you're like, ugh, no one's going to be into them. But that's not accurate. Like the, the positive and negatives you view in someone, you assume everyone sees those exact same positives and neg negatives. And that's not true. I mean, look at couples that partner up and you're like, she's dating him. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, ugh, he drives me crazy. Like, yeah, he might drive you crazy. Clearly he doesn't drive her crazy. We all value different things. Additionally, on the whole, people were not accurate when it came to predicting the liking between two unacquainted people meaning they did not seem to know who would like who. This is my favorite part though. Research has demonstrated from a study in 2014, Anik and Norton, that matchmaking is associated with well-being and leads to increased happiness for the person making the matches. Matchmakers are fucking thriving. They're loving this. Did you ever read the book, the Jane Austen book, Emma? There you go. Like they have a great time. Maybe it's a little plain God. Maybe they're, it's like legacy building. Like I'm creating this connection. Maybe it's the hubris of thinking, you know, all these like deep things about psychology and you can predict matchmaking, but it is beneficial to the matchmaker and not to the make ease. People ask me a lot to like set them up with people and I, I don't do it. I'm like, listen, I will, I will, introduce you. I cannot tell you that you have anything in common with this dude other than you're both single and you walk upright. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what creates a match. Like none. People who I thought would hate each other, love each other, vice versa. People I thought would like really hit it off, snooze fest. They're just, there's no real accounting for it. Okay. So you want to hear my experiences? Good. So millionaire matchmaker, I signed up for this when I was like, I don't know, maybe 26 in New York city. <laughs> What a crock of shit it is because the whole form and the form was like three pages. What would you put, what would you, if you were making a matchmaking form, trying to find people ostensibly love men who are rich, busy, you know, like you understand why men would be part of this service. Like I would, well, we'll get into it. You understand it. It's like they want someone like vetting them. Like they want, they probably have a personal shopper. They probably have like a car concierge. Like they want like the best selection brought to them. They're not weeding through everybody. I get it. So what would you put on a form? 
do you want kids? What religion are you? What are your hobbies? Like, what's a good date? What's a bad day? Like, you know, like things maybe about your personality or your heart or how you look at the world. Oops, oh, balls. No, that's not what it was. It was, what are your favorite brands? What size shoes do you wear? If you could max out a credit card at any store, what would it be? Who's your style icon? Literally the most like vapid things you could possibly imagine. Just ridiculous. Well, clearly nobody here cared about finding love, but I went on a few dates and I actually like one took me on a helicopter to Governor's Island for lunch. It was like wild, like they were crazy, but the guys were very like distracted. They were used to just like running through chicks. It was like a numbers game. It was, it didn't go anywhere. Let's talk about Talkify, T-A-W-K-I-F-Y. You might see advertisements for Talkify on Instagram because a lot of my single girlfriends have sent me this. Being like, hey, like, have you heard of this? What about this? And I'm like, do not do Talkify. Do not do this. Let me tell you my friend's experience. Okay, so she lives in New York. She's like a partner at her, like, not law, but I don't know, some kind of firm. I just kind of tune out. Um, she's fantastic, but I really don't know what she, it's like PR. Okay. She's so smart, incredibly well-educated. She's lived all over the world. You know, she's very, very smart. Ah, she probably is too smart for her own good because guys are kind of dumb. But like, she's also very busy and she's like, I'm gonna sign up for this. You know, she doesn't date a lot. And I thought, hey, this is fantastic. Okay, here's the Talkify situation. You pay $6,000 up front, up front. That's for six dates. That is $1,000 a date. What do you get for this? They set up a date. They, I think they tell you where, that's it. And it's like dinner. It's not like a bachelor date, like dancing in the rain, helicopters of Governor's Island. Nope, it is dinner. You guys pay for it. Like they don't even pay for it. And that's all they do. What they don't do, because this is important. What I thought was like really shitty and like crucially missing is any sort of feedback. Now, maybe she wasn't shooting me straight. Maybe they were giving her feedback and she didn't want to share it and that's completely valid, I get that. But I don't think so. If someone's setting me up on a date and it, the guy like doesn't ask to see me again, because they have to ask through the matchmaker, which I think is stupid, like you're adults, you can like bop smartphones and like exchange your information, but they want you to go through the matchmaker. Like they weren't giving her any feedback on like maybe what she was doing wrong. Listen, we can say men are trash, they absolutely are. But we can be, not trash, but we can be casual litter. We can be doing things that are not smart. Maybe we talk too much about our family. Maybe we interrogate them immediately about religion or politics or always go for the joke or we fuck too early. Like there's a lot that we can do wrong, a lot, you know? And if you're hiring someone to be this middleman, this interpreter, if you will, and they're not telling you like, hey, your table manners like kind of threw him off. Do you, maybe let's sign you up for an etiquette class at the plaza. She has excellent table manners. That's just an example. But what is the fucking point for a thousand dollars? Now I know what you're saying. Well, is she bringing like these blue chip, chip, blue chip guys to the table? No. I asked my friend like, okay, I assume she has this like stable of available smart, hot, rich dudes, even though me living in New York for 10 plus years, I never met one guy who said he was part of a matchmaking service, like not one. And I was only around smart, hot, rich, hot dudes. I say hot twice, good. Like I was, so I find it weird she would have access to all these guys that I literally never ran across once. Like I've never heard of, honestly, any guy being part of a matchmaking stable. That's because they're not. My friend was like, oh, well, she said they, you know, they go on Tinder and they walk up to guys at like bodegas and coffee shops and on the street and like ask friends of friends. I'm like, what? What? For a thousand dollars a day? Bitch, I'll take over your Tinder. Pay me $200 a day. I'll set you, I'll set you up 10 dates in a row. Are you kidding? I'll be your proxy. I'll message. I'll be like, hey, you got a date with him, 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 him. Get dressed. Go. Take your plan B. Let's go. That is demented to me, walking up to guys on the street. So 
the whole thing is so ridiculous. And this is when, this is when I'm like, I feel like this is complete horseshit. She is Christian and she said all the guys, she's like Catholic, she's not ultra religious, but she wants to find someone who is her same religion. That, okay, that makes sense, that's fine. She kept getting set up with Indian dudes and Jewish guys. And I'm like, they're not gonna marry you, dude. Like, they'll date you, they'll have fun with you, but I mean, not all of them, you know? Jewish guys marry a lot of different people, so do Indian dudes. But if they're traditional enough that they're using a matchmaker, they're looking for someone in their own culture. I, I'm sorry, I said what I said. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But there is a lot wrong with it if you think you're gonna change someone, like if you think their religion is suddenly not gonna matter or their mother's religion, or if you're paying a thousand goddamn dollars a day to be set up with someone who is inherently a dead end. Like, give me a break. And she's like, I really want to meet a Christian guy. And this matchmaker was like, oh, oh, I, <laughs> I mean, good luck. I don't know how in New York City you can't find a Catholic on the East Coast. They're everywhere. They're literally everywhere. It was so ridiculous. Look, I'm just going to be blunt. Matchmakers are for Jews, Asians, and Indians. They're not for us regular, regular white chicks from the suburbs. They're not. Because the guys are not, like the guys who would marry us, and again, this isn't a hard and fast rule, like three of my friends married Indian guys, so hot. Beautiful babies. Beautiful babies. Of course this isn't a hard and fast rule, but just your average white dude named Trevor from the suburbs is not even in like matchmakers, is not like a word that has, or a concept that has ever come up culturally for us just like white people. It, It doesn't. So he would not ever employ that or consider that. It's just the whole thing is just a bunch of bullshit. And there was this one guy she went out with that she really clicked with. And again, I don't know why they didn't exchange information. I think that's weird. But um, apparently he told the matchmaker, oh, I really want to see Sarah again. And she's like, yeah, I really want to see him again. And the matchmaker like never followed up. I said, do I need to get on the phone with your credit card company and file a dispute? This is, this is ridiculous. This is, I would be mad as a wet hen. Six grand, a boob job is like eight. I mean, if we're just trying crazy things to improve our outcomes, it's just wild to me. So don't do talkify. I mean, listen, do it if you want to. I I just don't think, if you're like a white chick, who is not particularly cultural or religious, I don't think that this is gonna be a tremendous outcome for you because I know actually a few people who started other matchmaking companies, they're all Jewish. Again, great, but I'm not. So, and I love Jewish guys. I love Jewish guys. They don't love me back. (laughs) They don't, like they're not gonna marry me. And you know what? I understand that. That's okay. That's okay. Like I get that people want to be around people who feel more like home to them. That's fine. I'm probably not gonna marry a Montana mountain man. And that's okay, there's someone out there for everyone, but it's just very frustrating that these people are capitalizing on like fear essentially and telling women that like, oh yeah, well, like we can fix this for you. And like, you're literally not doing shit. You're not giving them feedback. You're not making them better at the end of this. Like they have no more knowledge about themselves or about dating or about men than when they went into it. They only have $6,000 less. So proceed with caution. Listen though, if you have done a matchmaking service and had like a wildly different outcome and it's been great, let me know. And, and please, please specify if you are Jewish, Asian, Indian, Latin, Icelandic, whatever. If, if it was like more of a cultural subtext there, I'm very curious. Or if you're like, my name's Mackenzie. I am from the suburbs of Dallas. I used a matchmaker and now I'm married. I mean, please let me know because maybe I will call them up also. So in the meantime though, don't pay for a matchmaker. I think that's silly, but employ your friends as matchmakers. But remember, they really might not know what makes people go together. That's okay. It, just throw everything at the wall. Just be like, introduce me to all the single guys you know. No pressure on you. If it doesn't work out, I'm not gonna put you in the middle. I'm not gonna make you ask him. I'm not gonna, da, da, da. I'm not gonna make things weird at work for between you two. Just bring, bring them all to me. I'll weed them out. You, there's no accounting for chemistry. You have no idea where things are gonna go. And ask maybe, in, instead of like getting like straight up set up, 
Maybe ask your friends if you could police sketch out my ideal man, who would it look like? I've asked my Montana friends and it's weird. They all have the same composite sketch and it's, I referenced it earlier. It's like an older guy, divorced, two kids, like maybe tween, teens, you know, does something like totally different than what I do. Obviously, can you imagine me marrying an influencer, please? And just looks at me as like, isn't she great? Like they're a little bit more introverted, but they like me to shine and they like me to stand forward. They're like, she's so funny. She's so cute. Look at her go. Honestly, that sounds pretty great. Little nettled, no one said a D1 athlete. Fakes. We'll be back next time. I'm gonna take a few days break. I know, I know, I'm sorry. We're gonna take a few days break because I'm gonna be in Mexico starting tomorrow with our Shalligator getaway. I'm so excited to hang out with you guys and just relax a little bit. So I'm gonna try not to film while I'm there. You better pray Jennifer Lopez doesn't turn up pregnant. She always likes to ruin my vacations. I'll see you later, Shalligators. Bye.